Dr. Rick propping in on you. Hope everybody is having a great start to your year. Uh, hope that the things that you uh, aspire to achieve in this year, that you are already on your way to making it happen. I want to thank all of the people who have been supportive of the work we do at the Odyssey Project and the Black Voice for years. Uh, look, you know the routine. Uh, if you like what you see in here, click the like button, click the share button, and subscribe. Uh, for those of you who believe in the work we do in all of the areas in which we do it, uh, I encourage you to show some love, show some support financially. The information you need to support our work is in the description box. Today, I'm going to venture out on something. Uh, that I think is immensely important, and it is to talk about the mental health of black men. Um, and within the confines of just the demand of being a man, specifically a black man, but a man in general has some unique things. And I am both informing our beautiful sisters as well as I am encouraging our brothers with this uh, presentation. Uh, we literally almost annually get some uh, female theme uh, or a th female anthem uh, that is representative of the sisters who are tired of it. They, you know, they're not going through it anymore. They're loving themselves and all that. And actually, I don't have a problem with it. I believe that you need to have something that inspires you, something that gives you hope, something that gives you encouragement. I think there needs to be a deeper healing. I think there needs to be a greater understanding of what the real true issues are. But I think that the acknowledgement that a song gives a person that says you're not the only one going through it we understand it we're going through it we're 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 uniting together we no more this 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 all these different songs mary j has freaking made a living out of delivering those songs and there's been many others uh and all that but until now, I've never really heard a song that I think really touched the essence of what it means to be a man. And the name of the song is actually To Be A Man, and it's by a Canadian rapper named Dax. Uh, but he also sings in, in uh, I'm not going, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over some of the lyrics. There are three versions to this song. I'm going to encourage you to actually go listen to this song, because I'm going to share some of the lyrics with you, because I'm going to talk about the depth of what is being said in this song. There are literally three versions. There's the original version that Dax did. There's my favorite version, which is the one he did, which is the original remix he did with Darius Rucker, um, you know, former lead singer of Hootie and the Blowfish, which I just heard are going back on tour. Um, and then there is the mega remix, which has like eight different artists on it uh, from all different types of genres genres ethnicities so you got country you got gospel you got regular rap gospel rap uh and it's 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 soft rock and, and and i mean it's so much in there but every last one of them is touching the vein of what it feels like to be a man and i want to talk to you because i think that uh one of the problems that we have are expectations that are unrealistic um there, I think there is a dark spot in uh, the realm of true uh, awareness as far as black males are concerned uh, because we lack proper socialization on a grand scale. Uh, obviously, some parents are doing a better job at it than others, but we lack the total socialization. So we're trying to find ourselves. We're trying to be ourselves. And there's this... Uh, erroneous concept, philosophy, idea of our standard of we're not supposed to have feelings. We are not supposed to cry. We're not supposed to complain. We're not supposed to admit our weaknesses. We're not supposed to need help. And in all of this, we find so many men. And this is what I've discovered in my research. That's why this song hits so hard, not just because I can hear me in it in certain places, but I can hear all of the people that I've talked to in my research. 
doing qualitative studies and the, the responses that I've gotten from man after man after man. And this transcends race, but it's definitely prevalent within the black community. And so I'm going to read some of this stuff and then I'm going to go over what it means and why this is so prevalent. And sisters, what I want you to do is I want you to hear us not from a judgmental perspective. I want you to hear us as if you wanted a better world for yourself, for your children. And because if we don't heal as men, it doesn't matter how much room and space you get to heal. Your provider, your protector, your covering is not whole, is not well, is starting to crack. And that's something that we need to talk about. But the hook of the song says, I can't hide myself. I don't expect you to understand. I just hope I can explain what it's like to be a man. It's a lonely road and they don't care what you know. They don't care about what you know. It's not about how you feel, but what you provide inside the home. And that is the theme. If you get, It's going to be broken out and it's going to be expressed. And what I love about the mega version is it's not just two dudes sharing it. It's a number of different dudes from a number of different backgrounds that's talking about this, 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 this emptiness, this, this pain, this lack of a space where we can truly expose ourselves to an environment that cultivates healing. And for my brothers out there, I want to encourage you that you're heard, that you're seen, that we know you're there that we at the Odyssey Project and the Black Voice are going to be a constant platform uh, to speak up on black male mental health. And black male mental health isn't just about the mental illness side. It's about the need to create a strong, healthy mental state. And when you're talking about somebody that never gets to express themselves, that's constantly internalizing, it's a problem. You say, you don't care about how you feel. Now, does it mean that our wives don't care about us? Does it mean our children don't care? No, what it means is in the scope of the things of how it is, everybody's only concerned about what we do. And we don't feel like anybody cares about what we feel. Is that the true nature? No, but that's the feeling that we're getting because we have been commodified as men, especially black men. The only thing anybody wants to know is, can you pay the bills? Can you keep a roof over our heads? And that's your responsibility. We're supposed to do that. Nobody's complaining about the fact that we need to do it. But in doing so, you, you want to know how many times I hear, why do I need to say uh, good job when he's only doing what he's supposed to do? This is the only space in the world where you're told you don't get praise, you don't get adoration, you don't get appreciation because it's what you're supposed to do. At your job, you get raises for doing what you're supposed to do. In school, you get the grades because you're supposed to. When you're doing something on the football field, you're doing what you're supposed to do, except for when you're a man in your home, especially a black man, and you're trying to do it for your family. Man, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be a good father. Absolutely right. I'm supposed to be a good father. But guess what happens? God didn't design us this way by accident. When you tell us we do a good job, we actually strive to be better. We literally are driven by the affirmation. We're driven by the acknowledgement. We're driven by the appreciation to be better. Tell, constantly focusing on what you don't like doesn't produce. It's not like telling me I'm a horrible person makes me want to be better. Because if I want to be better, I'm going to naturally want that whether you're there or not and whether you tell me you like me or you hate me. But attacking me says the person I need to like me the most doesn't like me. But I, 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 I'm going somewhere with this. Okay, so here's uh, Darius Rucker's uh, uh, verse. He says, being a man is what you make it. You can't always live up to expectations. You try to please everybody while you struggle, so you fake it and end up out of balance, compromising situations as a good man, a do what you should man, a give everything he has and do everything he could man. You might find yourself feeling alone inside a house you built you don't recognize as home. And that's what my daddy told me, and I'll tell my son the same. 
Now that I'm older, I relate and I actually feel his pain. He never cried. He might have lied, but he did not complain. And he said, son, one day you'll soon have to do the same. I get emotional every time. You know, I get emotional when I stop and think and look around beyond the country lines of my small town. I think about all the men out there who feel like I feel now, who are screaming on the inside but won't ever make a sound. You know how many people I talk to? You, if you knew how many people I've talked off the ledge that on the inside are screaming. Matter of fact, before I ever heard this song, uh, one of my clients owns a, a pretty large PR company and one of... Uh, her clients is D David Mann, and she had tried to p bring us together uh, to do a special on um, mental health because there was this point in time where David went through two years of depression. And during this time, I got a chance to hear his story, talk to him, and now I think they're actually out, him, Kirk Franklin, and uh, one other person along with a black professional um, are out in there. They're actually, I think, doing a podcast. But at the time that we were doing this, we were working and coming together. And um, it's something that he said. He said that in this two-year stint where he was depressed, he felt like he was drowning. But when he looked around, nobody seemed to notice. He felt like... Nobody would know he was drowning until he had already drowned. And my response to that was, I feel like sometimes I'm screaming at the top of my lungs and no one will hear my screams until I go silent. So when I hear him in the song say, who, who are men who are screaming on the inside but won't ever make a sound, it's like there's so much going on that we have to stand up to. And it, 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 it's easy for the negative mindset to say it's a complaint. No, we're not complaining. We love what we do. We want to provide. A real man is yearning to provide. A real man is yearning to create happiness in his home. And that is so freaking important to understand that saying something isn't right isn't complaining. Saying that I don't feel appreciated isn't complaining about doing what I'm supposed to do. It's saying that I don't feel seen. I don't feel loved. I don't feel received. I feel commodified. And in that, there's no space for me to literally feel. And then the problem is that you get so many women that talk about the coldness of the man, the hardness of the man, the inability to be soft with her. And what you don't realize is we're creating this man because we're not allowing him to experience the, his feelings because what are you told? Real man don't cry. What are you told? You got to pick yourself up. Suck it up. Get out there. Asking for help is a sign of weakness. Real man stand alone. Self-made man. All these erroneous concepts and ideas. We were meant to build. Let me, let me tell, you, tell you something, men. Not only do you need your women to stand with you. You need brothers to stand with you. This idea of individualization, this individualism that we keep embracing as if it's absolutely necessary, has us in competition with one another, trying to prove I'm a better man than him, I can make more than him, I'm better at this than him, and we are missing an opportunity to come together and collaborate and to hold each other up and to lift each other up, and it's showing up in the level of brokenness that I'm seeing, a 49% spike in male su black male suicides from ages 14 to 24. A marked increase in an already alarming statistic, and that's intimate partner homicide. We're breaking, and now we're not only breaking and killing our girls and our excesses and our wives, we're now breaking and killing children and th this, this is not an excuse being offered up for violence. It's a call to say you need to get help 
and we need to do a better job of socializing young black boys to prepare them for what it means to be a black man so that they aren't overrun by the pressures that are simply there. And we need to find a way to create release valves. But then, uh, uh, and again, that, that, that hook keeps playing back in this song. And it's, I, I can't hide myself. I don't expect you to understand. I just hope I can't explain what, it like, what it's like to be a man. It's a lonely road. They don't care about what you know. It's not about how you feel, but what you provide inside the home. And then Dax comes in, and this is the, the original remix. It goes, don't give up, keep fighting. As a man, our son is our, our, son is our horizon. As our father's actions play a role and we end up like him. So that, so they can't let us see them hurt, cause we'll embody what they do and start a generational curse. No wonder most men are so depressed. All the things that they can't express, they go to war, get thrown on the shelf. They go back to war with their mental health. Then grab a bottle and ask for help. Try to pull themselves out of hell. Then fall back down and realize that they're going to have to do it themselves. It's the circle of life as a man you provide. They don't know what you're worth to the day that you die. And that's when they start crying, but then move on to a man to confide in. This is men talking. This is saying, I understand as a black man. As a matter of fact, when I wrote my first book, which I've now bookend with my 27th book, but when I worked my, wrote my first book, The Invisible Father, Reversing the Curse of a Fatherless Generation, I spent a lot of time talking to my sisters about being single mothers, about being left with the responsibility, about the emphatic impact of absent men. So I'm not one to make excuses. I'm not one to sit up. I have gone, I have advocated, I have championed the cause of protecting and providing and covering. I've ministered it, I've preached it, I've pushed it. So this isn't about excuses. This is about pointing to something that if we don't deal with it, we're going to consistently have a problem in the idea that you don't have to acknowledge what somebody is trying to express. One of the most frustrating things that I see right now uh, on social media is when a number of black men, well-respected black men, educated black men, knowledgeable black men come together and say, this is what we feel as men. And women come on that post and tell us that's not what we're feeling, that we are wrong. It's not what we're feeling. Not, not telling us we're wrong for feeling that way. Tell us we're not feeling that way. Telling us this isn't what we're saying. This isn't what we want. And it's like, again, you're completely willing to ignore us and give us our opinion. And it's a problem because we want to love. But the problem is we have an entire generation of men that's going cold towards relationships. And because we're being commodified, we're put in a position that all we have to do is get the bag and we get the bed. So then we don't need anything else. And there's so much missing. The bag and the bed is a small portion of the cold, the entire conglomerate of true relationship, true nurturing, true building, the environment in which we both grow and expand, but also the environment in which we create our progeny. And through that, empower them to go further than we went we are not in any shape form or fashion doing this because we are totally caught up in ourselves and we're suffering for it and then i'm not going to read you the entire uh because the the mega the mega uh the mega remix is, like I said, like seven of people. So I'm not going to read you all those verses, but I'm going to read you some lines for those verses because they hit me hard. Uh, there's a guy in verse number two, Ben Becker. It says, I know a lot of men feel the same, but I don't feel ashamed. I know a lot of men don't feel the same, but I don't feel ashamed. Brothers, this is for you. This is for you. I want you to really feel this. It says, I know a lot of men don't feel the same, but but I don't, I mean, don't feel the same, but I don't feel ashamed letting the water fall when my heart's ablaze talking about tears daddy taught me that's how you put out the fire that's how you put the fire out so when i'm hurting i don't mind to cry my eyes out 
I only have a few examples of a man in my life and only one who made perfection lifelike. So I try to remember two words when I don't want when I don't know what to do. Don't forget Jesus weapon, brother. So can you. There's no weakness in shedding tears. Crying doesn't make you a crybaby. One of the most dangerous things we can do as men is internalize our pain, internalize our frustration. It's like anything else. When you hold something in that's meant to be released, it builds pressure. And at some point that pressure is going to burst somewhere and you don't get to control when and where it bursts. You have to find a release. If crying is a release, release it. If uh, seeking counseling is a release, release it. If having brothers you can meet with on a regular basis and download, do that because it's going to make you a better man. Plus, you're going to put yourself in situations where you're going to evolve in problem solving. You're going to evolve in your ability to manage the moments that you are facing in your life. But if, you do, if you're not careful, you'll overwhelm yourself with what you're going through to the pro point your problem will become so invasive and pervasive in your life that you won't be able to manage it. And it will show up in destructive ways. At the very minimum, you destroy your relationships. In the greatest point, you destroy yourself. You've got to be aware of this. Another one is by the mediary. And it says, we're, we're asked to strike a bit. This is just a, a couple of lines out of the verse. We're asked to strike a balance. It doesn't make sense. So we bottle everything up in our minds. We grow cold, dark, alone as we slowly die. You ever wonder why it's mostly men who commit suicide? We figure, why not? We're already dead inside. Now, uh, being that this is my line of work, I understand that the the entire dynamic of suicidation and suicidal ideations and all that plays in there is quite complex and that understanding the difference between the driving forces with females and males is extremely important uh depression is a a, a, a strong uh depression and hopelessness is there and a strong driving force with females and in some ways it's the, the driving force regardless but with men our brains work front to back we are literally built on accomplishment the things we're able to do especially the things we're able to do with our hands but being able to fix things being able to make things right we do that we gain our sense of worthiness in the things we're able to do creating an environment providing a home uh, providing a, a lifestyle for our families. These things matter to us and they will tell you that they don't. They will tell you that we aren't driven, that we don't have these desires. Yes, there are some trifling men out there. Yes, there are some men. But what we're trying to do is we're trying as men, the, the, the vast majority of us have a yearning. There's nothing we want more than to be looked at as protectors, providers, prophets, priests, and promoters in our home, meaning that everybody in our home is better because we're there. The thing is, this isn't just something you wish into motion. It's a developmental evolutionary process that you get better at as you grow, but you never truly totally master. And the thing is, we live in a world now where everything that is being permitted uh, presented in social media is the perfect version of something that never really truly happens and but everybody's basing themselves on that thing so now there's this greater sense of failure because I can't do it like he's doing it or I'm not getting uh, the love and affection because he's doing it like that and, and she expects me to do it that way and now and so everybody's been judging ladies start to appreciate him for what he does Communicate to him what you want him to do that you don't think he's doing, but make sure that that's combined with an acknowledgement of what he is and who he is and what he's doing. And get rid of this idea that because he's supposed to do it, he doesn't need to be acknowledged for it. <laughs>
You want to be acknowledged for being the mother you are. And the idea that it doesn't matter means you don't understand human psychology, that you're sitting up and you're letting a hardcore premise be pushed upon you that is highly destructive. Men are literally driven by acknowledgement, affirmation. One of the reasons why body counts matter to men is because this the the greatest affirmation a woman can ever give a man of his manhood is giving herself to him. The problem is we do it so casually now and there's no connectivity to it that the feeling that a man gets at the moment that he's doing it, the re chemical reaction and release of neurotransmitters, endorphins that are released at the time of intercourse is an, a form a, a, uh, and uh, the, the highest form of affirmation of his manhood. The problem is because there's no link and connection that he can anchor his emotions in the moment that it's over, it subsides. Now, if that was going to be there consistently, then that becomes the source of that confirmation and that affirmation. And it's anchored in that. So then he can revisit the thought when he's not va when he's not physically present to pursue it. The problem is when he does it, now he's got to go out and he's got to conquer again. Why? Because I need that feeling. He doesn't know that's why he's doing it. It's built in. It's built in. The gr a woman affirms with her voice, I appreciate you. You're doing a great job. I love the way you do this. You're so awesome when you do this. From the way you, I mean, from the way you hold her. Uh, I mean, when you are, when you are, ladies, when you're from, from the way you hold me, from the way you talk to me, from the way you handle our kids, from the way you pay the bills, from the way you do all these things that you are built to do, I appreciate you. That's a, that, that she affirms with her voice and with her words, but her greatest affirm, uh, uh, affirmation is she gives the most tender part of herself to you. She literally sits up and says, you know what, I'm going to trust you with me. The wholeness of me, I'm, because it, 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 from a biblical perspective or from an ancient spiritual perspective, the moment that you literally um, come together and you have sexual intercourse, there's a oneness that's being created. Now we know scientifically that there are some things that are being exchanged that are literally changing uh, so much of body chemistry and so many other things that don't simply subside because the person is gone. So now you're creating these multiple things and it's it's a sickness in and of itself. But what he's doing is because he doesn't have something he's anchored in, because we're not cultivating family the way we did, we're not emphasizing family the way we is, and we've commodified him, he can go out and conquer based on the size of his bag. And so now he's out there just betting women, putting up his body count because, see, that's what he's going to go talk to his boys about because everybody normally is in the same evolutionary space. Because we don't do hierarchies anymore. So it used to be a hierarchy where you're doing stupid stuff. That was an older man that was in the clique that was going to call you on the BS and tell you, hey, man, that's not what we do. You got to grow the hell up. And now we avoid that. So everybody's pretty much in their own little spaces. Nobody's sharing anything. And we're suffering because of it. Um, and then here we go. Here's another one. It says, and they got to eat. So I bury my face. He's talking about his family. Uh, and this is from Haley Dayton. Um, he says, and they got to eat. So I bury my feelings and I stand on my feet. Like I'm like, they told me I got to be grown. They told me you're on your own. They told me, but we're not alone. He showed me. Um, and this is a brother. This is a, 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 a Christian rapper, man. And the, 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 the yearning and the putting out of these emotions, it's so freaking cathartic. And I want to encourage my brothers Find a space that you can uh, experience catharsis, that you can release, that you can let this stuff out in a safe space where you're not going to be judged, you're not going to be de de denigrated and belittled, uh, where you're going to be encouraged, where you're going to receive advice, where you're going to receive love. And black men, we've got to learn how to love each other. You know, we've got to learn how to love each other. We've got to learn how to be concerned and care enough to be in the battle and the flames with one another. Because we go through some things. We go through some things. And the thing is, the key, the, 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 the go-to response to it is I'm good. Saying I'm good and being good are two different things. And I can tell you that catastrophic loss 
overwhelming pressure, traumatic experiences are not going to be pushed to the side with a I'm good. You, it, it, the I'm good is a curtain, but what's going on beside, behind that curtain is literally ever, uh, evolving into something uh, monumentally catastrophic, uh, whether it's spiritual, emotional, physical, or all three. And we have the ability, if we start caring and being concerned about one another, men on men, women and women, men on women, women on men, we need to get to a place where we're loving one another. Here's one by Skywalker Da Vinci. Uh, man, young brother. I love this cat, man. His flow is nice. Uh, but he gets here and he says, a lot of my days were blooping and dogging me. So I fought. Now I'm going to read this whole thing. It's not that long. He said, as a man, if you show your emotions, they take you for weak. And this is nothing new. Teaching my son to be mentally strong and prepared for the battle. He ain't even two. Being a father is lit, but I got to admit that sometimes I don't know what to do. Provide and protect was the name of the game I was playing for you. And you knew, and you know, that's true. I'm conditioned to love that reality, but you can't take a look from my view. A lot of my days were blooping and dog, uh, dogging was blooping and dogging me. So I fought and you didn't have a clue. When I had when I had it, we had it together, but now we divided. Your colors are true. I shouldn't have to ask you for help. If you knew I was struggling, I would have did it for you. And I have no problems with the demands of our sisters to be loved, to be covered, to be protected, uh, uh, to be handled gently to be lifted to be supported uh, but I, I I must make a counter demand we need you to as you need us to be understanding of your need to heal and your your need to be covered and protected we need you to be aware of the fact that you're dealing with a human that you're dealing with a person who's fallible in their nature, that you need to be searching for my love for you and not the ultimate uh, perfection or the idea of what it should be without being aware of what it is and where it comes. I think so many times we get caught up in where we are not and forget where we came from. And I think that in doing that, we struggle and so many men that I talk to, and I've got so many men that are either recently divorced, going through a divorce, uh, in a struggling situation where they're contemplating divorce, and I'm there with them, and I'm trying to find ways to help them save what's there because I, I, I still believe in the sanctity of marriage. I still believe in covenantal commitment. I still believe unless you're in an abusive situation, this idea of happiness is a dangerous proposition because we have been conditioned through corporate influence in media and in all the stimuli that we engage that happiness is a, a, a achieved through things. The problem is the acquisition of things triple trigger triggers the hormone and neurotransmitter dopamine. Sharp bursts periodically is an awesome thing. Dope little thing gives you a great feeling. The problem is dopamine as a neurotransmitter is a rapid fire, rapid fire neurotransmitter that tends to knock out neurons. So these neurons that are receiving the new neural message of this elation and excitement are being blown out and over time the neuro uh, the neurons reduce the number of neurotransmitters and neuroreceivers so that it doesn't take the hit but over time it dies out and then you re that's why when you try something that feels good great whether it's drugs whether it's alcohol whether it's sex whether it's shopping whether it's gambling all these things that you can get addicted to the reason that happens is the first set of dopamine sends a message and the neurons reduce the number of neurotransmitters that's going to receive the message so that it doesn't get hit as hard and that it can preserve it because it realizes that this excitement, this rapid firing is literally destroying the transmitters. I hope I'm not being too technical. But I want you to understand something here. And so what happens is it, it, it eventually 
the neuron dies, and then you end up, what happens is as the, as the neuron reduces the number of transmitters, you have to do more of what you did initially to get the same feeling. Eventually, you can't get the same feeling, but you created the habit. So now you're habitually driven. Now your body is actually yearning a feeling that you can no longer create for it. So you're literally going mad crazy trying to produce it. And you can never beat it. You're going to always want more stuff. You're going to always want more things. You're going to always want to go on more trips. You're going to always want more clothes. And you're going to realize that this chase for happiness is destroying you. True happiness in its historical context isn't produced through dopamine. Again, dopamine is a good feeling and it has its place. It's produced through the neurotransmitter serotonin. Serotonin is a much more calmer transmitter. And as a matter of fact, it counters the hypersensitivity, I mean the hyperactiveness of dopamine. And it's positive and it, and it, it, it can literally be generated from internal. So through, through the thought of a place of simple rest simple peace simple acquisition you can literally create this state of appreciation and gratitude in your mind and produce serotonin matter of fact just saying i'm grateful starts to produce the chemical reaction that produces serotonin to sit up and say i love you produces what serotonin so when you say i'm not happy you're saying i'm choosing not to focus on the things i control but i'm going to focus on the things i don't control i don't have enough stuff so i'm not happy and so i'm leaving and that's what's happening in a bunch of marriages i'm not happy and then when you talk about happiness it's about what self-indulgence i want i want i want i want i want nothing wrong with wanting but when you prioritize wants over your state of mind and your and, and the responsibility of being who you need to be for yourself and for others, you realize that the greatest responsibility you have is first being your best self. But a second is being a blessing. That's the fulfillment of life. That's where happiness comes from. It's something you can do no matter what state you're in financially, no matter what state you're in emotionally, no matter what state, you can sit up and be a blessing and you'll find out it immediately triggers here. You can't tell me one time that you sit there no matter what you were going through, no matter who you just lost uh, in your family, no matter what you just went through in your relationship, no matter what's happening on your job, how empty your bank account is, you can't tell me one time that you did something for someone when you were in the midst of a dark place and it didn't make you feel better why because that's the name of the game is to do for others is to be there but if you're seeking self you miss the opportunity to bless others which means you miss the opportunity to bless yourself um i mean and then there's another one on verse nine by the great white um and i said i wasn't gonna read it but I'm, it says I'm going I'm to pass on that one. I'm not going to do it. Um, here's one by Caveman Brown, and I'm only going to read a few lines. It says, I've been drowning in the deep end. Anybody want to give me a reason? I don't even try uh, I don't even try to, brother, with social life because I would rather be alone on, my, on the week. I don't even try to have a social life. I would rather be alone on the weekends just chilling with my demons and just trying to suppress the depression in need of a blessing because I'm really about to lose it all. Just remember that I tried to be a man when you lose me, y'all, and I'm gone. I'm pretty sure I was way off on that, but, but, but you get it. This whole idea is there's so many people out there trying to do this thing called manhood. There's no manual on it, especially in the black community. There's no universal rite of passage. There's no standardized idea, universal idea of what manhood is. We're all trying to figure it out, and we're trying to do it in a way that satisfies this internal yearning that says this is who I'm supposed to be. I'm trying to fulfill and fill a void inside because if I didn't have dad that to tell me, I don't know. But even if I had dad, if dad's not there now, who do I go to when these things happen? And the thing is, you, you, you got this idea, if I say this, they're going to think I'm weak. If I say this, they're going to think I'm soft. If I say this, uh, I'm not really a man. If I, if, if I cry, I'm not really a man. If I say I need help, I'm not really a man. So I've got to be a man. And, and that goes back to the original verse where it sits up and uh, Darius Rucker says that you, you're trying to be what you're expected to be. And uh, you're trying to meet uh, expectations. Matter of fact, I'm not going to sit up there. I don't know. It says, 
Where is it? Oh, I'm in the wrong one. No, I'm not gonna go through it. But basically, say you're trying to meet expectations. And you can't live up to them, so you end up in compromising situations. In other words, all this stuff that I'm trying to get across to you is this. We are only as good as we are healthy. Uh, brothers, I want to encourage you to love on one another. I want to encourage you to love yourself enough to get help. I want you to love yourself enough to find a way to find someone to plug into. Brothers, we need to come together and be together to be stronger because our community needs us. Our children need us. Our women need us. Even when they're walking around talking about they don't need us, they need us. And we need to be able to be strong enough to stand up and be what we are needed to be in order to generate and create the environment that will allow our women to truly soften up and fall back. Uh, because a lot of them have had to do so much on their own for so long. They don't know how to put it down. They're walking in their masculine energy and don't even realize it. Ladies, I have no qualm with your demands. But if you want those demands met, you got to meet demands. Life will give you whatever price you demand of it. Whatever you demand of life, it'll give it to you. But it always comes with kind of demands. You don't get to demand something and not give something. And what we need is we need your ear. We need your understanding. We need you to be realistic. We need you to be caring. We need you to see that we do yearn to love you. We do yearn to care for you. We do young learn to provide for you. We're not sitting around saying, now, You uh, granted, you got some brothers out there that are lazy. You got some brothers out there that will sit back and have no problem with a woman taking care of them. But that's not the average man. Don't let the world feed you that. We get up and we work our ass off every day. Some days are better than others. Some days produce things. That some years are better than others. This is life. What we need in order to elevate is somebody who wants to elevate with us. Somebody who is willing to take that journey. And this is a journey that if the very nature of it is challenging there are some bright moments there are some unbelievable highs but there are going to be some some valleys there are going to be some difficult moments there's going to be some challenges this is life when you look at the person that you're considering spending your life with can you see their love for you can you see their commitment to you can you see their willingness to push through the dark moments because it's that that you need. That perfect situation doesn't exist. And despite what's being displayed across social media, what you find in romance novels and what you see in movies, trying to be on the same page with an individual for years is daunting. And the idea that you're going to do it successfully every day or every month is unrealistic and it's in under uh, pressure of that unrealistic expectation that you start to see faults and cracks in the foundation we've got to learn how to understand it's all right to be in a place of disagreement and not in the same place but if i look at you and i see i love you you love me and i love you then it's worth fighting for see nobody wants to fight it's too easy to put down and move on and we leave these splintered parts of ourselves and our fractured selves in all of these different relationships because we consistently chasing a dopamine fix that doesn't last. Look, I love all of my brothers and sisters. Look, I'm just in this fight and I've done so much in the way of research over the years uh, to talk about uh, African-American adolescent and young adult male violence, to talk about intimate partner homicide, to talk about um, socioeconomic ills within the black community, to talk about gentrification, mass incarceration, uh, miseducation. And I have given you everything I have in 27 volumes in books, literally thousands of scholarly art articles, over 40, what, 30, close to 40,000 prose articles, articles written at a level that everybody can understand and i'm pumping all of what i have into the veins of our communities hoping to bring life to that community but we have to make up in our mind that all of this is worth it so on that note look i'm gonna get ready to get out of here i want to thank you for giving me your time i want to thank you uh for 
uh, hopefully sharing this and giving. I want to thank you in advance for those who support the work we're doing. There's so much research literally on deck right now in the area of mental health. Uh, so again, thank you. But we've got work to do. Again, I love my brothers to the max. To my sisters, I love you babies. You guys are the most beautiful and unbelievable in the world. Uh, bar none. I wouldn't love anything else but a black woman. Look, take care. I'll talk to you guys soon. I'm out. Yeah. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.